So I guess we could get started. Uh, before we just start, I'll just open us up in prayer. Um, dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you, God, for today. I just want to thank you, Lord, for the love, for the grace, for the mercy, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you have gathered us here together, Lord, in this place, Lord, uh, to speak about, Lord, the truths that we've learned, oh God, um, from last Sunday's preaching. I pray, Holy Spirit, that I continue uh, as we sit here and discuss, Lord, as we sit here and share our hearts, Lord, I pray, oh God, that you grant us a spirit of wisdom and revelation, oh God, to grow in the knowledge of you, Father. And so I just want to thank you once again for, get, for the opportunity, for the gift of the privilege of being able to gather as a body of Christ, Lord, and Holy Spirit, we acknowledge your presence for you have said in your word that if two or three are gathered in your name there you are in the midst of them and so holy spirit continue to lead us and guide us lord and this meeting and our discussions lord and whatever we are to do oh god at this time oh god we just want to uh bless yes pray for and pray for those lord um, yeah. who are not here for those who will come in for here uh, and for those yeah. who are here now oh god uh, we thank you god for everything that you're doing lord continue to uh, lead us and guide us lord and continue yeah up our hearts lord to greater revelations lord as we discuss this name thank amen. you we love you and we praise you in jesus name. amen amen, amen. So before we continue, hallelujah uh let's let's share some praise reports uh so whoever has a praise report uh, let's go ahead and share and let's give god the glory amen, amen. so whoever wants to share uh go ahead yeah i just want to share an app um, good evening po sa lahat. Uh, I'm just thankful to God uh, kahit may isa sa family namin na nag and when I, you know, uh, Brad Ted was already at the airport uh, when Sister Lilita told told us to, to, I mean, when Sister Lilita told Angelo to, the, to do the test. So I was kind of hesitant to tell my husband because he was already in, in, the, husp ay, in the airport. So, but still, I... I told him, uh, your son is positive, but you know, but, but you know, I did that for uh, for the safety. So, and when he uh, arrived in the Philippines, praise God, he uh, he bought a a test kit, so he's uh, he's also negative. So at least uh, he has peace of mind, and I praise God because we've been. Uh, I mean, it's really God's protection, you know. I've been with with Angelo. Uh, we went out like uh, on Sunday evening, but thank God, uh, I'm me and Tintin and and Brad Ted is still negative. So I praise God for that. God's protection is really there. Thank you. Amen. Well, um, what okay, happened to the rest of the church? Okay. Well, I but, thank God we're back from Israel. <laughs> Safe and sound. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Testimony time, ba? Testimony time. Yes. Um, praise report. Praise report. Oh, okay. Praise report. Love. Um, thank God because, first of all, it is really a big opportunity, Pastora, to bring me to the to Israel. Um, although my first, like, long, long time ago, I really wanted to go to Israel. But I think this is the most um, thing that happened. I mean, my my whatever my desire, what I'm saying, whatever my desire has been granted to see Israel and everything. But one thing the most that I really appreciate and I uh, thank God is to be able to go to the 48 hour uh, prayer meeting. And um, it's also, although it's opened really my mind also how I see um, uh, these people, the Korean people, uh, how they are compassionate in, especially in prayer, you know, uh, compare before like us, like it's even, I mean, even sometimes now it's just like, for me, it's when we say, okay, let's pray time or lay hands on this person. Sometimes just like, you know, it's hard to go, you know, in the front, you know, to pray for that person. But this one, it shows me more the, uh, the compassion and the dedication and especially in praying, you know, even though there's sometimes that, uh, um, 
I'm not saying that I'm not agree about it or that like so so loud and everything, but I think that is the way it is, like expressing, you know, how they prayed because the Holy Spirit was there and everything. And then one more thing is just like um I thank God also because God gave me the opportunity to really have that uh uh, day off to have a rest, you know, to go to uh, Israel, and actually being with you, Pastora, it's and Sister Lilita. I mean, we have a lot of um, um, uh, uh, love, fun, you know. But it, I mean, the other thing, one more is when we were at the um, forty-eight hour prayer meeting. You really have to really deny yourself because you know even though you're so sleepy and everything you have to really open up and waking up and i remember you know when jesus went to prayer um with his disciples and then he came back and then and then they say can you can you can you still you know um do not with play me? with one you know, hour pray with me and then remember guys he went back three times and then i said lord <laughs> forgive me it's just like because the thing is we right angela the three of us i mean sometimes we um make it a joke but it is really true you know that we sometimes there's meditation like what what sister lilita says but it's because you know it, <laughs> I mean, that makes what us deep meditation for angela right <laughs> very deep yeah. But it's tired, you know, from from the airport, you know, like 13 hours or more, more than that. And it's straight to the worship. And then we settled ourselves, you know, to the to the hotel. And of course, we talk until 2 p.m. and then wake up at 5, 5.30. But, you know, I praise God because God gave us the strength, you know, and the ability to love and pray and everything. And that is open up my mind also, you know, to just really um, intentional in our uh, life, life uh, style in praying. And, you know, that is the... One thing that I got in this 48-hour prayer, it's not just only to see Israel, but to really see how they, how they minister and how they do, you know, the 48-hour prayer. And uh, that gives me a inspiration and also to those people that testify and uh, how they preach the gospel, how they share the gospel, you know, to all these people, you know, uh, it doesn't matter who they are. And it's encouraged us because our prayer um, has been answered because Israelites, um, Jewish and um, other countries, uh, I mean, their eyes start opening for the gospel, and that's what we have been praying for. And I know even though we were not there to uh, really share the word of God, and we know that our prayer avails much. Amen. 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 I have a face report also. Um, so... For the past few months, um, C. Francis, every time he performs CPR, he would get like abdominal cramping and <clears throat> he already went to the doctor, they did x-ray, they did ultrasound, ganyan, and they, they couldn't find anything. But on Thursday, uh, he had a procedure, but they had to do like put some, uh, is it, I, I'm not sure if it's, if it's colonoscopy, but it goes through the mouth, Sister Lilita, so I don't know if that's colonoscopy so they did that and then um so they found out that he has I guess two inch of hernia so abdominal so that was causing like every time he performs CPR but we're just thankful to God that you know um despite that you know uh what's causing the the, the pains like we know that God, God already healed him. So we're praying for the complete healing of 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 that thing that was found um, when they did the test or the procedure for Francis last Thursday. And then the other testimony I have is that my boss and the other girl from work is back. So 
finally I could breathe, except today I had to do some crunching because tomorrow we have a lot of deadlines. So um, my boss is still not caught up with, you know, the stuff that are going on because she's been gone for five months. So, um, but I'm thankful that she's back and I'm able to take some time off. And then the other one that I'm thankful for is that, um, so the health department already um, processed the application that we submitted and we were already expecting them to come in the next like two to three weeks to do the inspection in the shop. But uh, as expected, unexpected on Monday, they actually showed up to the shop and did the inspection and we got an A for, to like the letter grade A. So I'm just thankful to God that, you know, um, whatever the enemy, enemy meant for evil, what God turns it for good. So I'm just thankful that, you know, uh, God's doing good things like he always does. So I'm just thankful for those things. Those are a lot, actually. Amen. <laughs> so what are, what's going to be next for Francis? Uh, wala pong ano, um, walang dagawin, just, I guess. He has uh, to wear a brace. Uh, I think meron siyang, ano yung restriction? Yung para hindi siya mag sa, sa CPR, sa work. He can only, uh, he can only carry so much weight. Yeah. 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 And then, um, yung may gamot na sinasabi, and then he has to watch his food intake, yung nagkakos ng, Gird. Mm-hmm. So, ganun, yeah. Yeah, because my brother, one of my brothers had that. They had to operate on him. Mm. To, push it, pa, to push it up. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Sabi, sabi um, they don't need to do that. that so let's pray. So. Let's pray for Francis. Father, we thank you for um, wisdom and uh, uh, immediate understanding of uh, steps to do. And we thank you that, Lord God, even in the midst of uh, uh, difficulties that uh, we have to face, like in the case of the Lagans, the, the shop, these things, and now Francis, and now, you know, uh, that these are just processing stages for where, for which you are also allowing us to go through that we may be strengthened and at the same time we may be polished and at the same time we may find our bearing as to where we are in so far as your grace and in so far as our placement with you is concerned and thank you that in all of these things it may not be easy but lord god uh, thank you for the grace that um, we can come out of it better we can come out of it with depth of understanding we can come out of it more faith and believing and um, our, our 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 strength renewed knowing that god you're always there that in whatever uh, situation we may be in you're always there you never leave us you never forsake us you're always with us thank you for all these testimonies lord god it inspires us it grows us and it makes us you know appreciate you more and more and enjoy life even better in jesus name amen amen man anyone else have any praise reports that they want to share before we get started with our worship i i will just add Lang, anak. I'm just thankful for Tintin. It's her 15th birthday today. So I, but I'm just thankful Happy because birthday. wala po siya. Ah, she's mobilizing po. So, yun po yung gusto ko yung testimony kasi before po, uh, she will do only things uh, if it's when with kuya or otherwise she won't do it. But other youth, I guess, encourage her. And yesterday she asked me, Mama, can I go mobilize tomorrow? I said, yes, as long as you're done with your homework. So someone pick her up uh, this afternoon. And then uh, she's still not here yet. And then she just texted me, Mama, uh, can I go mo- mobilize again on Saturday? So, you know, uh, it makes me happy uh, that way that she's, you know, uh, taking the initiative po, meron na siyang initiative. It's like, unlike right. me, ipu push mo siya. So, I praise God okay. for that. And then, still, awesome. can I, yeah, you can. You can. So, and then I'm happy. Yeah, that's his, uh, uh, she go without 
that, that she goes without without kuya na yun lang po Thank, uh-huh. thankful po praise the lord thank Amen. you jesus teenager na yung aming angela <laughs> okay. right man does anyone else want to share anything before we get started with worship so brother ted is in the philippines Yes, uh, he's in the Philippines right now. I see, because he's there. He's, I think it's... it's. I think it's like 11 a.m. around that. Yeah. yeah. No, it's morning over there. Yeah. Oh, that's right, 11 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> okay, dokie. Okay. All right, so I'll just... Uh, we could go ahead and start with our worship. Amen. Well, I asked uh, Angelo to give me 10 minutes or something. I just, uh, but you know, most of most of the folks on the church is not here. But anyways, those of you who are here, just um, to give you a heads up, you know, um, for one, uh, I'm, I'm literally alone when I do this, except for my son, Jay. And of course, for the Filipino Forerunners for Christ, and uh, for Alan and my my students from online, but basically I'm by myself coming from Los Angeles for Forerunners for Christ Los Angeles, and so that makes it a little bit different. Uh, in in that I don't have your physical, I don't have one or two of you physically supporting me there, knowing you know how I would like things done, especially the worship, etc. Etc. and the prayer. But anyways, you know, all things will have to work together for good for them that loves God. And I'm confident that uh, whether by myself or with you guys, I mean, he's with me. And so uh, what I'd like to uh, for you to, to give you a heads up on is that this this conference or this gathering meeting is this is not the way I thought it would it would go. Because when we went to San Francisco in 2021, for the purpose of Thanksgiving for the 40 years of, uh, uh, of, of ministry, and uh, we said that, you know, we will also go to the Philippines to do a Thanksgiving in the same way. I was just thinking that when we go, which we did not go right away in 2021 20, and maybe even early part of 2022, but now the opening has, has come. And how fortunate that I will be there exactly on September 13th, which is actually my uh, born again birth anniversary. And, uh, and all of a sudden, all of these things has uh, evolved. And so even if the cry of the bride in the end times is going to be like the salvo title of this uh, conference, really uh, first part of it will become also a thanksgiving for for so we we kind of close in we will we will seal the uh, 40 year thanksgiving that we were uh, that the lord showed us to do and finish for this time and so i really believe the other thing that i want you to understand because uh, just like tonight tonight you know i mean midweek service is supposed to be something important for us because you rehash, you revisit what you have heard last Sunday. And yet, I mean, I think instead of every, most everyone amongst us in the church getting excited to attend the midweek service, I feel like there is a digression. I feel like there is a, a falling asleep. Some, some people are distracted and I, I, I'm not very happy with that. Because we're facing too many things actually going forward. After this September, we will be uh, changing, changing seasons, and this uh, we will be changing. Uh, we will be entering a new year, and there seems to be a relaxation, not a good relaxation in 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 the things that we're doing. Okay, so just take a look at that, and so because I see that and I notice that and I feel that in the spirit. Um, you know, I, uh, I will be in a battle front where I don't know what kind of battle front I will be facing. I mean, if this COVID attack on me is a sign of I'm already being attacked, 
well, then, you know, you guys, I just want you, by me sharing with you tonight, uh, I want you to be even more braced up. You cannot relax your hold. You know, we're supposed to be doing 40 days of praying, 40 hours, and uh, I, I don't feel that in the spirit. So, unfortunately, I'm sorry to say that, but I, I feel like people are not on, uh, on, the watch, on the watch, not on the ramp, not cohesive and together in this season. All right. And I really want all of you, who, whoever is in this broadcast tonight, I really want you to tell, wake up the other people that are asleep. Wake up those that are kind of, you know, are getting lackadaisical again. I mean, do we have to go to another sand to be invigorated? Do we have to have another, you know, um, thunder and lightning comes from heaven to no, we got to have, we have to be consistent in our walk with God, we cannot be flippant. We cannot be excited because something new happened. No, because, you know, uh, that's, that's the lie of the devil. And so, okay, going back to the, to going back on track of what I would like to say is that uh, if you just look at the title of this conference already, it is, it is a battle, it is a warfare. But at the same time, even if it's going to be a, a warfare, having to present this and having to cry this in a place where I don't really have that much uh, stronghold uh, as a church for us, I really feel like uh, God is going to sustain me there. But I want to invite you to participate in this, that in this Specifically, you know, this next few days, uh, I'm hoping that tomorrow I'll be negative as by faith so that I could leave on Friday. But at the same time, I want you to know that there are many actually right now where the participants are going to 60. And so uh, possibility of us going, oh, you know, more than our expected uh, attendance will be more. And so that is encouraging, but at the same time, uh, I feel like, you know, you, you are my, my, you know, I need you to be alert. I need you to be awake as a church, because even if I was, I'm going there by myself, really, I mean, I'm going with you. I'm taking you with me. All right. And, um, this this opportunity to to uh, deliver this cry of the bride in the end times uh, battle cry is is going to be just uh, this will be one occasion to do this and God may amplify this cry all over the world and so I am just kind of feeling the the uh, uh, the intensity. Although I'm also knowing that, you know, there's so much grace this past few days that I have just been here at home. Uh, I've got so much uh, presence of God, so much anointing, so much revelation that God has shown me on how to present it. Because this is the first time I'm going to present this in this way. And I have this and I have that. But how do you? How, how does, how does Jesus wants me to do this? How, how, you know, and so, and remember the most of the people who would be there are really new to the way I present, you know, uh, preachings and I present the uh, paradigms and except for some of those who are online, but they're still, you know, <laughs> they're barely understanding what I'm doing. So I really need help. And so please stay awake. I want, I want to ask um, who will who will really stand with me because during your during my day is your night and you possibly will be asleep, especially on that day on the thirteenth. I want people to commit to be awake while I am preaching, <laughs> all right? Because we will start at what 
eight in the morning, actually, maybe that would be the opening. But so we will probably start at 930 or something. And I think instead of ending up at five, we may be ending up at seven or eight because I could just sense that there will be a lot of people who would want to be ministered and prayed for. And uh, at the same time, there might be a prolonged uh, preaching or teaching because of the uh, uh, you know, I can't be as fast as I know how to preach, but I need to listen to how the Holy Spirit is wanting to deliver the message to them who may be listening, uh, know, see, hearing this for the first time or understanding this for the first time or not even understanding it for any time. And so I just feel like, you know, this is going to be um, a tremendous, um, I, I'm not scared because I know God is always be with, always with me. You know, I've, I've done much ministry where I'm literally by myself. I don't have anybody. At least Jay's with me. I mean, uh, um, uh, the um, Philippines for Forerunners for Christ Philippines will be there and some other people. But but my concern, I believe, is because of the, the message that we carry, that message of the cry of the bride in the end times. Um, even Howard was surprised at the title. I didn't look for the title. One morning I just woke up and God told me that that's the title. And so um, I'm saying that to say that... Um, um, it is going to be, it's new to me again in this season. And I, I really need for all of you to make a stand, especially on that day, on the 13th, or maybe even before that on the 12th, 13th, because um, Alan and I, we will practice the worship on the, th on the 12th when they come from the Maggette, from the Maggette, because, you know, even the worship, the some the songs they don't know most of the songs that I know to flow in and so at least Alan and his wife they're they're learning it and they're working on it so on and so forth so basically that I mean I don't think I said anything much to you but uh, you you get the drift you can hear from my voice uh, what you know I you 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 might think I'm I'm really looking at you know I'm looking at something that is different. It could be wonderful. It could be really wonderful. But I know it's going to be work, and uh, I will be there partly for my brother's uh, birthday, and so so on and so forth. But so please let's let's not loosen our hold on the horn of the altar. Let us, you know, continue to do that. Uh, let us um, just be thoughtful. Because what happens there is, um, it, it is a cry. And so, yeah, amen. So that's, that's basically what I want to do. I can't explain anymore. If you're, if you're not getting this, I don't know what else can we get. Because this is an opportunity that is probably once in a lifetime and an opening that God is blessing us with. Okay. Your turn, Angelo. Amen. Amen. So um, we can go ahead uh, with uh, our midweek. Uh, continue with our midweek with, the, with our discussion. Uh, regarding uh, my dad's message with the believer's heart in the last days and regarding my dad's message you know I feel like for me personally in my life I feel like it's something that needs to be reminded for us because especially as what Pastora said you know uh, there it's it's so easy uh to to fall asleep it's so easy to kind of uh, be restful or in these times that we are facing especially as we go deeper and deeper into these end times and so i'm um, listening to just what pastora said and like uh, with what my dad has talked about i feel like for me the preaching has really reminded me about um the wakefulness that I'm supposed to be in uh, when it comes to you know the world uh because we know that as the end times uh 
as we go deeper and deeper into the end times, you know, sin and wickedness will increase. And because of that, it'll be easier to, to kind of conform to the world. It'll be easy and it'll be harder, you know, to remain uh, pure, pure and holy for God. And so um, I really thank God for my dad's preaching here and the believer's heart in the last days, because uh, it remind it allows me to examine myself, you know, when he talked about how people will only love themselves, money uh, in second Timothy, you know, uh, three verses one to nine, which we will talk about later. Later. you know it really uh kind of sobers me up to the reality that you know times will get harder and so it's important for us as christians to be alert to be awake um in our in our walk and in our um relationship with god and so uh, for this midweek i have for us two questions first one is how is second timothy three verses one to nine relevant in our walk as believers during the end times and number two how will you personally live out the believer's heart and so we just have uh we just have those two questions uh so whoever wants to go ahead and and go at it uh, for the questions uh the stage is all yours so whoever wants to go first can go ahead i'll go um angelo um well, I thank Brother Ted uh, on that Sunday um, preaching because he diligently and meticulously <laughs> went through um, uh, 2 Timothy 3 verses 1 to 9. So as you mentioned, uh, this is a reminder for us. And I guess we need to be constantly reminded, even with our midweek service. So um, we know all this that, of course, at the end times, it's going to be perilous times. And what caught me was verse 5, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. So um, I, I was going through this and listening to Brother Ted, Pastor Ted again. And uh, it, I related this to what went on in our JIPM Israel. See, um, having all this with, with other believers, because we, we're just one body. So it's easy for us to be in church, to be with our brothers and sisters, nice and comfortable. But, you know, uh, when we are with other believers, it will really show where I am in Christ, my position in Christ. So going back to the JIPM, see, uh, we understand this having the form of godliness and denying the power thereof. So just um, just the form. We're just going to be paporma, na, we are pious and all that. But when it boils down to really very simple thing, like just this one, um, I was just observing. I'm not condemning anyone, but it, I was just reminded on for myself on how will I react to this. Like uh, one of the leaders was asking this group of Korean people to, hey, let's add some more chairs because we don't know there will be more people. We don't know the exact number of people joining us, but not no one, <laughs> no one stood up. And I was just observing. So I said, hey, um, let me help you. And I, I think I, a few of us also helped her. And, and this is very simple, you know, like helping, asking them to help. But they, I guess, ignored her. So, but then we're here for prayer. So are we having a form of godliness? <laughs> but then when the reality of the truth is, we're not really doing i mean it's a simple thing you know but then so i was just reminded am i going to be that way so i stood up <laughs> i stood up and i mean not for the fact that uh, but I, it's, it's more of the fear of god like if i utter and say those words that we say easily but not then really doing what we're saying then there goes my Matthew 7, verse 21. <laughs> I don't know you. So, so all those kind of things. And also seeing uh, really how we react among our brothers and sisters, despite of them uh, really not 
showing the Christ in them. Uh, so uh, that reminded me of also um, with these gatherings, it also, it either encourage you or discourage you, but anyways, uh, that's, that's our attitude. So um, I also see these two couple, teacher A Abraham and Sarah, oh my goodness, they were so humble and meek and that reminded me also to be humble myself because of course uh, we are in this world and it's easy to just be proud prideful and arrogant but then with seeing other people these how they how they act then it's also a reminder for me that okay you need to be humble so that's why uh, living and also with these verses uh, in Timothy, it showed me how God really loves us because this is a warning to us that in the end times, this is going to be perilous. So be forewarned. And this is how much I love you. I'm warning you. So then we cannot be caught surprised in surprise that the end times, of course, this is the end times. This is perilous times. So get ready. As, as we mentioned, be alert, be awake, and to endure. See, coming to midweek service, doing the posting, all these, are we going to endure? And it's not even to endure, it's just having the joy of doing all this. So if you delight in the Lord, and the Lord delights in you. So as I always see all these things that we do, I, I just, I mean, it's the attitude of the heart. Is it a joy for you or just an obligation of doing, because, you know, you're told to do this and that. So, um, so I always remind myself in whatever task I do, be it small, be it big, then let it be a joy for you to delight in the Lord. Uh, that's what I got on the um, Sunday with the verses and the reminder and all those things. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, when you uh, talked about uh, that uh, that part of the verse where, you know, having the, the uh, form of godliness but denied the power thereof, I think um, it really uh, just goes to show how um, in a lot of uh, of our walk and in a lot of uh, the believer's life, it's so easy to be casual with everything that we do. And I believe that us as, you know, foreigners for Christ, and we actually talked about this as at our YG discipleship meeting on was that two, Monday, Monday, you know, we talked about how it's so important to not look and it is so important to not look at the little things and just kind of brush it away. You know, the little things that we do for God, the little things that we do in this church, you know, play a big role in, in the grand scheme of, of what God is doing to us as foreigners for Christ. And so really um, something that I really enjoyed in my dad's preaching was, you know, when he talked about the different topics, whether it be the love for money, being boastful, you know, he, he related it to uh, a natural example, you know, whether it be disobeying our parents and he gives an example and it really goes to show that whatever happens in the supernatural it is because of what's happening in the natural right uh when we look at you know at the end times and when we see people being boastful and proud um you know the, the super the atmosphere in the supernatural is uh, greatly affected with what is happening in the natural and so that's why it is uh, uh, so important for us as christians you know to all to also uh, find significance in, in what we do here in the natural, you know, whether it be um, it, uh, responding to others um, in love, you know, whether it be um, like what Tito Lee said, having a humble heart, you know, uh, being not uh, acting uh, representing Christ, you know, in our natural functions, you know, will greatly affect what happens in the supernatural atmosphere. And so that's why it's so important for us as foreigners for Christ to remain awake, to remain alert in what we do. Uh, because something that I, when, whenever my dad, you know, uh, shared these examples, like I get convicted, like, wow, like I do that, you know, or wow, like I do this. And so it's a matter of reflecting and really just uh, asking God, uh, you know, God, like, what is, what, 
what are these things in my heart, you know, that you want to get rid of uh, so that I could live a, a life more, uh, more dedicated to you. And so that those are the things that, that really uh, speak to me and something that I pray that we as believers continue to live out, you know, uh, to always desire to just grow in a love uh, for serving Jesus, for um, uh, doing all these ministries for him, uh, because, you know, it is only him that should be the focus and it is only through him that we could do all these things. So who else wants to uh, go and share uh, their take, whether it be the first or second question? Oh, uh, I can share on the first question, even though it's like, it's really short, but it's kind of similar to what Tita Lalita was talking about. Because as I was reading 2 Timothy 3, verse 1 to 9, like the first verse already states that like, that this will be like the marker towards the end times. Like it tells us that when we see this, like within people and in society, like we're already living in the last days. And it keeps us aware, like, that we also need to set ourselves apart from the things that are happening towards like the people and the way that they're like becoming and the way that they're living. Cause it says in the MPC version that this time will consist of great stress and trouble and it's going to be hard to deal with and hard to bear. And I think for me, that's just like, it's already a warning that God's giving us that we need to like really like align ourselves to him and have a firm foundation. Cause even though these things are going to be hard to bear, like we're still going to be able to prevail and like, come out of these like things like okay because like um for me personally it keeps me aware with like my heart and makes me check like my motives and like it also keeps us aware not to fall into the trap of the enemy because for me especially it's like I feel like I'm I'm still like overcoming this but I'm still like very emotionally led and like if someone's like you say like if it's whether my parents or if it's like something like people that I'm experiencing and like there's like they're acting this certain way towards me like how am I supposed to react towards them because like what Tita Lalita read in verse um in verse five it says that people will hold a form of piety true religion they but they deny and reject and are strangers to the power of it their conduct belies the genuineness of their profession and I have to research the word belies and that means like it contradicts what they're doing so like for me it's like being a believer in the end times is also being able to reflect like sorry is also being able to reflect like who God is so if I'm saying this one thing but then I'm reacting in a completely different way just because of the things happening around me then it's like like how will I be able to like like you know like really stand firm in like my faith and so um it's also just to keep us ready for like whatever is going to happen because like okay last night like as I was going to bed like this is like something that I was like meditating on I don't know why like it just like like it just popped in my mind all of a sudden. And it was something that Tita Ted said during his preaching and that Tita Lolita mentioned about like, you know, saying like, Lord, Lord, like, even though you say like, he can say like, I don't know you. And I was just like really meditating on it. Cause it's like, okay, like say something does happen like that in that situation where you're caught up and then you respond like in anger. And then suddenly you're like not aligned like with God. And then all of a sudden he returns, but it's like, and then you're suddenly like, no longer ready because of that one moment because you let that one thing get to you and so for me it's just constantly keeping my mind like my mind my heart like in check and aligned and just like and if something like that does happen just like really repent and go back like there's really like sorry I'm not gonna like um it's like there's nothing it's not hard to turn back it's just like our own pride that gets in the way so it's just really turning back to God and I think that's gonna go into like the second question so I'm just gonna um end it right there Man, anyone else want to share? Uh, so Amen. I just okay. Oh, go ahead, Sister Marilyn. So right. I just want to share also. So, uh, reading uh Second Timothy uh, chapter three verse one to nine. So makikita mo dun yung being chaos, what no order. So it's it's scary. So kasi uh, anger, uh, lawlessness, out out of self control. So, yun lang mga ganong bagay, it's really, uh, na, it's very chaotic uh, yung environment natin. So, but you know, uh, but God's mercy is always there. So, I mean, short lang yung, ano, I don't want to explain. Because as I read that, the next, ano, yung after, in chapter 10, oh, nandun din yung answer ni Lord eh, what, we, and what are we going to do as Christians? So, uh, and then nga yung chapter ay yung chapter 3 verse 10 all scripture is brought out by God so if we will just follow if we will read the word of God so it is uh, his instructions um, so 
it will it will be all right and it will be it, everything will be in order so i uh, the answer is already there all we have to do is to to follow christ so and to share to say most of the people even christians and and even me when i'm busy i i spend less time reading so we just have to deal i'm to keep reading and reading the word of god so in uh second timothy chapter 3 verse 10 so uh I like this one. So, uh, verse 16 pala, all is scripture is, lagi nang sasabi rin to ni Pastoral sa mga preaching niya, all is scripture is, is breath out by God and pr profitable for teaching, for reproof, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So, andun na po yung answer sa lahat ng ano, ng lawlessness, godlessness in the last days. So we just have to focus on reading the word of God and living with it, sharing with it. That's it. Pa. Amen. Tita Melda, you, you want to go next? Yeah, amen. Yes, it is true um, that the scripture, I mean, just for reading the Bible, reading the word of God is already in there. Everything in there. It is, the. I mean, like, let's say the Bible. What is the Bible? It says, like, basic instruction before leaving earth. So that is why um, this is what we live for. This is our lifestyle, you know, to just read the word of God. But also, because there are some, like, uh, warnings. The most important thing is, like, on this one, um, the, the, this, uh, verse that um, Pastor Ted uh, mentioned on Sunday, it is really a, um, uh, Paul wants us to understand and uh, realize what's going to come in the last days. Because in John 16, uh, 1, it says that I have told you this thing so that you won't be abandoned your faith. Uh, for you will be expelled from the synagogue and the time is coming when those who kill you think they, uh, think they are doing a holy service for God. Like what uh, Sister Lilita mentioned, uh, his, her observation of what's going on, uh, what happened over there, you know, in, in that 48 hour prayer. I agree that um, it's going to be a lot of um, Christians uh, professed Christian, you know, especially in these last days, that many will drift away in their faith. And also, it is also um, uh, uh, reminding uh, what's that Paul wants us to realize that there's going to be a perilous time, terrible times that is coming. And what are those terrible times, you know, there's the, the, the people around us, and it's going to be um, more crucial, it's going to be more chaos, what is coming, and how we going to respond, you know, in these last days, like what it says that um, there's going to be a lot of boastful, uh, blasphemies, uh, lovers of money, self-centered, and everything, which is we see already um, um, in, in this time, especially in the church, you know, but God wants us to um, like us right now, that's why um, the scripture is telling us or the Bible is telling us that we have to be aware and, and don't mingle or uh, avoid these people, you know, not uh, avoiding them because we also need, also need to share the gospel of God, you know, but to really avoid what they do, to be sensitive or what uh, realize that if these people doing this way, you know, should we um mingle with them no we don't should we follow them we don't so the things that we have to realize in these last days is we have to um our uh the character our character our posture our position how we respond to this warning and how we uh live the word of god because it says that you know 
uh, seek first the kingdom of God and all things shall be added unto us. So what are those added unto us? You know, if we seek first the kingdom of God, then we realize that the word of God is true. The word of God is alive. And this is the one that teaching us to be holy and set apart to be consecrated. And I like the one that Pastor posted this morning also. And it's also remind us this, you know, that um, I think Pastor or Abby, I think Abigail, that um, um, uh, there's like worship, you know, and these uh, people, um, a worship event or whatever, a service event. And these people went into this gathering for the first 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 uh, first day and everybody went you know there's miracles healing deliverance and everything this is going to be you know the reality of the church right now you know but who are these people you know these people are are they is 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 there a motive is um are they holy are, are they motive is uh are god you know and then the next day the announcing about the um the uh uh what is uh, uh the what be consecrated or being holy you know no no one did you know just 25 people and then the next day that's what happened and so this is what's going on in the last days and i pray to god that um uh we will not really fall away uh, in this last day so it is really important to know what is coming and to be a holy bride and be consecrated and set apart because this is what um, we see now especially uh, in this age to come you know so amen uh, I wanted to follow through also verse 5 in the EMPC version, it says, for although they hold a form of piety, true religion, they deny and reject and are strangers to the power of it. Their conduct belies the genuineness of their profession. Avoid all such people, turn away from them. And um, like what you guys already mentioned, I feel like, like this passage is not only referring to the world, the unbelievers, but it's referring to the people that are in church, right? Because they say, you know, having the form of godliness, but denies the power. In the TPT version actually says, uh, they may pretend to have a respect for God, but in reality, they, they want don't. nothing to do with oh, God's yeah. power. Oh. That's crazy. Stay away from people like this. They may pretend to have a respect for God, it's just pretentious, but in reality, they want nothing to do with God's power. Mm -hmm. And then Paul says, stay away from these people, from people like these. And um, it's it's a great, this teaching is a great reminder for us because like what pa Pastor Ted mentioned, right, in Corinthians, he quoted the scripture. Paul said, examine and test and evaluate your own selves to see whether mm -hmm. you are holding to your faith and mm -hmm. showing proper fruits of it. Test and prove yourselves, not Christ. Do not, do you not yourselves realize and know thoroughly by an ever increasing experience that Jesus Christ is in you unless you are counterfeit, disapproved on trial and rejected. And so, like I said, it's a good reminder for us because we want to examine ourselves. Our, are any of these character, char characteristics that were listed out on this passage, like, does, does any of these, like, do we possess, do we have these things, right? Like, it's to it, examine ourselves. So not to point fingers to the unbelievers or to the other people, to the churches that, you know, denies the power of just having form of godliness, but us, how about us, right? And so it's a good reminder to look at, like these things and like, you know, Angelo mentioned about the discipleship. One of the things that we actually talked about is, you know, I said, we I don't want us to read what you guys already posted because I read already your answer. So there's really no point of just reading your answers. And so let's talk about practical ways. And even be, like during the day, Pastor um, posted, you know, okay, you know, those are great takes, but it's about doing what you said you would do because we want to be doers of the word. And so one of the things that was mentioned here, right, the, what is it, disobedience 
to your parents is one of the signs. And, you know, many children, kids now are like that. Um, and it's ever growing. It's because it's the sign of the times, right? And so if that's us, and any of these, you know, characteristics that was listed out here, examine ourselves. And we, like Maria said, we repent, we change our mindset, and we go the right way. We go the way of God. We go the godly way, the holy way. And so what's the second question? I can answer that. Sorry. How will you personally live out the believer's heart? Oh, so yeah. Live. So first, like I said, exam examine our our hearts, examine ourselves if we have any of these and then repent and then just continue to really, we've been talking about um, you become what you behold, being Christ-like, right? And so that's what we do. Um, and as day to day, you live out a life, you know, we, we grow. It's not an overnight thing. Every day you grow, but you got to do the beholding, the one gazing upon his beauty and his majesty majesty and to become like him and um be transformed from glory to glory so that's my take and i'd like to just it it may not be a deviation but it is actually um because when when second timothy chapter three tells us perilous times are in the last days, there shall be perilous times. I mean, if you just pause and scrutinize and get a definition and even get a revelation of what that means, it should already, you know, shake you. It should already make you tremble. And then, of course, then, you know, the, the narrative goes on, so on and so forth. People will be lovers of self, would rather be entertained rather than be lovers of God and so on and so forth. It is, uh, it, it, was a, it, was, it was the description of the church in those days of Timothy and Paul. And so it is still the description of the church today. And so it is very scary and unfortunately, uh, people just gloss it over. They just read through it and don't even understand. And that was wonderful for Ted, you know, having to brought that, uh, brought that up and from his own perspective kind of, you know, uh, message it to us last Sunday. And it was wonderful in that. But you see, it's, it's one thing that we're reh rehashing the preaching of Sunday today midweek service but it's another thing to really understand the depth of what 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 being preached and what was being spoken in that chapter that it is terrifying what he's saying there is terrifying that even our takes we should have trembled as we give our takes because that's real that's a fact it is happening. It is not just uh, one or two churches. That's majority of the body of Christ. And uh, as much as, you know, it's terrifying, uh, what are we going to do? Just be terrified? Just hide in our closet? Just be among ourselves? What are we supposed to do? We're supposed to change our own individual life and lifestyle. We're supposed to address it individually to our lives and then corporately as a church and as a body. And of course, you know, part of uh, what I'm going to minister on in the Philippines would be, you know, the cry of the bride. And part of that, I'm going to talk about the bride getting herself ready. And in my study on getting the bride, you know, what, what is the bride's response? And, uh, I was just looking at, you know, uh, let me just read to you, Revelation 19, 5 to 7. It says, a voice came from the throne saying, praise our God, all you servants. I heard the voice of a great multitude as the sound of many waters and as the sound of mighty thundering saying, alleluia, meaning I agree with you, alleluia, God, whatever you're saying, whatever you're doing, I agree with you. For the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him 
glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. See, time is going to come when that powerful voice coming from the throne of God is going to be the same, the same power that comes from the throne of God, sounding like a great multitude, great many waters, sounding like that, thunderings and all, will be the same sound of the bride in the last days. And so that's from, from 2 Timothy chapter 3, his description of the church and the people of God to a powerful sound of the bride in the last days, in the same magnitude, in the same power that the sound of, him, of, of, the, of him who is seated on the throne and Jesus and the Holy Spirit is going to sound. That is powerful. I don't think you got what I said, but anyways. Uh, but, you know, just going into the, the last part, like, and his wife has made herself ready. What do you think is that? What is being his wife being made ready mean to you? What does that mean to you? What does that mean to me? What does that mean to us as a church? I know that we have not really thought this in detail, but you know a little bit more than others on uh, the bridal paradigm, the bridegroom paradigm, the marriage of the lamb and all this and all that. But what was astounding is that the material I'm looking at, uh, he says that uh, uh, being clothed, Make, making making ourselves ready in, individually and as a a body really wh what does being ready mean it's making the right choices every day not when we are inspired because we went to the sand or when we were inspired because there was such anointing when we went to san francisco or just you know it was just different and so on and so forth but it is the the small choices that we make the right choices that we make that the the, the letting you know denying ourselves choices daily instead of just being preoccupied with business we just know I am going to be loyal. What is my loyalty to God? Every, every decision that we make and every choice that we make towards God and towards prioritizing him and towards being loyal to him and devoted to him becomes our apparel. That becomes our readiness. Do you guys get what I mean? And when we are, and, and I just want to bring that up to us because it's so easy to be, to be preoccupied, be, be, you know, see, take a look at what is wrong. And that will always be available for all of us. And part of us being watchmen, you know, and, and intercessor is, is part of us is, you know, see what is wrong. But ask God, why am I seeing this that is wrong? Not for you to be discouraged, not to you for you to be, you know, mad at the person's doing wrong. I mean, you've been 20 years or 100 years old as a Christian and you're still doing this, you know, not to do that and not to act like that, but to find out what, 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 how do you see this person? And, and I'm saying that because may, if, if we're praying, God open the eyes of my understanding that I may see, God's going to grant you that seeing. And that seeing is seeing the things that are not right, seeing the things that are not good in the body of Christ, in your neighbor, in your family, in those that are part of the, of the church, even as forerunners, where they're not doing right, where they're always doing wrong, where they're always lying, where they're always saying all of these nice words and not living it. You know, these are the things that we will see. But what are you going to do with that? Because it can be annoying to you. It will actually, you will discover that uh, pride in you, spiritual pride in you can rise up and becomes the very eyes that would see that situation rather than the eyes of God to confront that situation with the same confrontation that God will do to you. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? And at the same time, um, what is it? That makes us, you know, as a ready bride. Like I said, many choices. Like I said, the loyalty, like uh, in Luke, Jesus said, but 
who is my brother and my sisters, but them who obeys the word of God. So there is a qualification. And so everything we do every day, you know, like when we were in the JA 48, I mean, I saw a lot of things and I felt a lot of things and I'm, ah, you know, but hey, God, we're here to do a certain thing. This is, I don't, I'm not happy with that. That one, I'm not happy with it. What, what shall we do? And what the Lord said to me is, what, what will you do? What will you do? How will you respond to this? I mean, and I'm saying that, I mean, it seems like, you know, here and there, but that boils down to having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. That is the hardest part, really. That is the ultimate result of all the narrative from verse one to uh, this part. I think this is what, verse nine. And, um, because it is eroding, you begin to see, you know, they become, uh, let me look at my Bible. Uh, what was that? And that's why even the, um, yeah, what did it say? I'm over here. Let me just read it to us. I think I will be the last one, right? Uh, Ted, are you going to say something? Or you're in the Filipino? But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Okay, why is that perilous? For men will be lovers of themselves. Toying, lovers of money. Toying, toying, boasters. Toying, 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 proud. Toying, 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 blasphemers. Toying, 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 toying. Disobedient to parents, six toings. Unthankful, seven toings. Unholy, eight toings, unloving, nine toings, unforgiving, ten toings, slanderers, eleven toings, without self-control, twelve toings, brutal, thirteen toings, despises of good, and so on and so forth. And then see how it start to erode. Traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And the next thing. Having, is verse 5, a form of godliness, but denying its power, and from such people turn away. See the erosion? How it erodes. Starts first with what? Started with men will be lovers of themselves. And then all the subsequent you know, things that distracts that, you know, and then it begins. And, and, and this is terrible, but, you know, God is still in control. He's still in charge. But are we in charge? Are we, you know, taking charge of our individual choices and our individual attitudes? And know, time um, when I was looking at, this and I was just I just started weeping because it says uh, it was granted, it says there, it was granted to her to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. That's Revelation 19, 7 to 8. And what is a righteous acts of the saints? Here's what I saw. The saints will receive garments which reflect their righteous choices. The bride will wear her love. Are you wearing the love of God? Are we wearing the love of God? Jesus will reward our small choices for righteousness. It matters what we do in the face of temptation, difficulty, mistreatment, disappointment, and boredom. We make ourselves ready by agreeing with him in our character, understanding, and service. And, you know, um, because, you know, yeah, make yourself ready. But what is that readiness? You know, and that reminds me when uh, the uh, Ilagans were going through the dot and do and all that. That was, that was, those were difficult. Testy, trying, you know. Um, uh, economically, it's very draining. They're supposed to be making money and yet, you know, they're spending and then they're, out of business for that season, etc., and then to be 
to have to face some of the people that's supposed to help them with with annoying attitudes you know it, it it's but those little choices the choice not to be impatient the choice to be patient the choice to be compassionate the choice choice to cho- choice to trust god choice to you know just okay be patient just just do this god you know what's going on and 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 so on and so forth and those those are the righteous acts of the saints those are the the choices those are the acts postures and decisions that makes you you know gives you makes you ready makes us ready and can you imagine if all of that all of us you know in this small church for runners for christ will do that we will we will see that uh, a second timothy chapter 3 will start to change will start to turn as in joel 2 uh, 12 14 15 turn and keep on turning because your one uh, i think uh, did i did i do that this week one man the one man choice one man one man can make a change to the city one man can make a change to a nation one man one man's choice one man's life can impact a sodom and gomorrah but unfortunately abram stopped at 10 you guys see that and uh, you know ezekiel yeah ezekiel even god said in ezekiel 22 i was looking for a man who would stand the gap but i found no one they were all busy doing their own thing and so what did i do i had to pour out my wrath upon the nation and so one man stand with god can prevent him bringing and releasing judgment into a city and nation and that's why this second timothy chapter 3 is tremendous and uh you know looking at that i mean if we you can't we can't just you know that one preaching is wonderful but that needs to be lived i mean individually you know i would think that you know a lot of the people from church would be in here wednesday night because it's a very very timing and a very important you know topic actually do you guys say what i'm get what i'm saying ah uh, and amen so anyways man Um, does anyone else want to share anything uh, regarding the second question? Uh, personally, live out the believer's heart. I think Pastor really explained it well, you know, because uh, um, especially in my personal walk and in my personal, you know, relationship with Christ. And when, as Pastor also stated about, you know, the little things uh, for me, every time I live out my life, I always uh, have these conversations with myself. and i always ask myself how will you reflect the character of christ today you know when it comes to other people when it comes to the situations i'm faced with and how will i remain alert i uh, you know because uh, for me you know with college with all these different things that are going on it's it could be so easy uh, to kind of just be entrapped you know by mm. the of life by the flow of the world uh, but you know those type of questions those type of 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 those self examinations of my heart allow me to be more grounded in in how i relate with god and how i you know um represent christ um when i'm out and about and i think for me and my personal walk it's so important for me to always remain grounded you know in who christ is and what he's done for me and you know really re, re- uh re- reading about you know second timothy 3 and uh, with pastor explaining how you know it first starts off with loving ourselves and it goes down that that downward spiral until you know we have a form of godliness but deny its power mm-hmm. um it's really alert uh, it really should alert mm-hmm. us because there's so many uh, that we could 
I know that we know people who are like this. You know, we know others who are like this. And so I really agree with Pastor. And I also talk to myself about this, where we really need an urgency, you know, to see the church be transformed, to see the church, uh, to, to, to keep each other accountable, you know, in our walk, in our faithful walk with Christ. Mm-hmm. And, you know, until we have that urgency, until we have that heart uh, to pursue godliness, to pursue a, a life of consecration, then you know, we're in big trouble, right? And so, you know, I guess it's just in my in my heart and in my prayer uh, to really allow these truths uh, to be made real to us. Mm. Um, as we always say, we not just, you know, lip service, but to really allow these things to dig deep in our heart and to bear fruit, you know, in, in our actions and how we relate to others. And so that's just something that that God has really kind of just impressed in my heart, uh, during this this uh, preaching, uh, during this uh, midweek service, uh, so Amen. Does, does anyone else? That's good. Man, does anyone else want to share anything? No. Okay. Uh, Tita Lolita, uh, can you close us in prayer, please? Oh, sister is here. <laughs> well, um, well, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this midweek service that we are able to rehash what has been said on our Sunday preaching. Lord, we thank you that um, by your spirit, our eyes are open. The eyes of our hearts are open in understanding what is the truth of your word and not just simply have a form of godliness, but the reality of the truth of your word. And that we pray that we will live um, and be it our lifestyle of mm. um, what you have, uh, what we have learned, and not just increasing our knowledge, but really live to what we learned and studied and uh, authored and authored as we said, this is going to be what it is going to be. So, Lord, we thank you for Angel um, that, uh, for facilitating and the rest of our brothers and sisters that are here today. Um, to, and that we pray for the rest of the members of our congregation and for the whole body of Christ that uh, they will really live up to what they're yeah. supposed to, to be. To, mm. to be holy, to be yeah. a prepared bride, and that uh, that we as a bride can cry out to you, Jesus, come quickly, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Good job. Good job, guys. Amen. Thank you, Angela. Thank you.